and welcome to Bad Ideas, the show where we look at misfires, mistakes, and miscalculations from all throughout history. I'm Tony Southcott. I'm Albert Berg, and the bad idea that we are exploring today, Tony is doing the heavy lifting on this one, we're talking about oh. Olestra. And for those of you who don't know, Olestra is basically a fat substitute that came out in the 90s. It's been around for a lot longer than that, but it essentially is a fat that has that adds no calories, no, uh, no fat, or cholesterol to foods. It's something that basically was used in a lot of potato chips and other uh, products like that in an effort to make it a lot lower calories. That sounds awesome, Tony. Yeah, just like a lot of the things that we've talked about, there's always like a lot of potential for the idea, and then it just kind of goes south. I'm seeing here that it was uh, initially floated by the Frito-Lay Corporation. I could imagine they thought it sounded awesome, too. Yeah, it, you get to advertise your chips as being healthy and not adding a bunch of calories to people, and they're still going to taste good. And they really did taste good. I'm not sure if you ever had any of those WoW chips, but they were almost indistinguishable from other chips. The, like the, the difference was so minimal that it really didn't matter. It was still a very good chip. I don't, I don't recall ever having a WoW chip, Tony. Is that what they call yeah, them? Yeah, they were all labeled as WoW. Like, that was the big thing that Frito-Lay put out there because they were using... Uh, you pro you might know this product more as Olean, which was what they uh, they labeled it as for marketing purposes. I'm not sure why there would be... Very... I guess lean is the main point of it. Oh, yeah. No, I, I that's that's excellent right yeah. there. Between that and WoW, I, I want some <laughs> right now. My mouth is watering, Tony. Where can I get some of these chips? <laughs> well... You can actually still get some of them out there. You can get Pringles and things that are made with them. But let's take a let's take a step back. This is actually something that was developed all the way back in the 1960s by Procter and Gamble. They were looking for a more uh, fat soluble, uh, fat for baby formula, and uh, just making something that was a little bit more digestible, something easier that wouldn't cause as much gas and things like that for the kids that had to take formula. Instead, they created this different kind of fat that wasn't digestible at all. Uh, well, that's uh. That's a little different direction than what they were going, huh? Is this sort of like the guy who invented the post-it when he was trying to make a super glue? Pretty much. Or, you know, the guy that, like, invented penicillin by accident. Well, yes, but he wasn't trying to invent, like, a disease that would infect everyone and kill them and accidentally invented the cure. That's true. That's very, very true. It's, it's kind of fun when people are looking for one thing and they find the exact opposite. Yeah. And basically the way a Lester works is... It's, an, it's a really interesting chemical. It is a fat that kind of radiates out from the center. It's all hydrocarbons and everything, but it actually can take up to set, like six to eight different fat strands, and it makes this kind of star-shaped, like, like a starburst pattern with all these chemicals, and it makes it too big for the body to digest. It simply can't go through uh, the intestinal wall. And, We're talking on a molecular yes, level here, right? Although, it's not like you have these giant fat globules, like sitting on no like if chips. you were to look at uh if you were to look at a bottle of olean it looks about like vegetable oil it's actually a, a substrate of sugar and vegetable oil uh put through a chemical process okay so but because this is such a huge molecule like it's in the i, I believe it's in the thousands as far as the amount of chemical or the amount of uh, atoms that are in it it does not get absorbed through the intestinal wall and just passes through the gastric system uninhibited which is going to be what leads to our big problem with this particular product. But in 1975, Procter & Gamble realized that they could turn this into a money-making endeavor and sought FDA approval as a fat substitute. The FDA did not approve it because they were trying to prove that it would lower cholesterol, but it didn't pass the 15% lowering threshold that they wanted it to. Uh, they would shelf this for a while, and in the mid-80s, Kellogg's cereal was allowed to say that, uh, that Kellogg's helped ca uh, prevent cancer, and that got Procter and Gamble wanting to put their put their hat back in the ring for a health product like this. So they they went after it again, and instead of using it as just like a cooking substitute that they would sell, so people could make their own cakes or whatever, uh, they wanted to make it into their own uh, foods through the Frito Lay company. At this point, it was actually not approved again because the FDA was concerned that it would encourage more top of the food pyramid eating where people would just have like more cookies, have more everything because without the consequences of higher calories, they're just going to be eating more instead of like uh, eating the same amount and taking in less calories. Is the FDA the bad idea in this episode, Tony? Because this sounds awesome. This is what everybody wants. They want to eat bad stuff and not have the consequences. Oh, there's, there's definitely a little bit of that like coming up. 
you you see some people that are actually kind of mad that this sort of product has been banned in certain countries, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the reason why it was also turned down here in the 80s was because it would essentially turn your butt into a geyser as reliable as Old Faithful. Okay. Because... You like you really you're looking at a product that just zips through your intestinal tract, and whenever they test out these things, they're giving it in like small servings, uh, like just a little bit, and it might give somebody a tiny bit of a stomach ache or anything like that. But if you have a little bit too much Olestra, basically it just gives you the worst diarrhea that you can have. It's like on the on the level of like salmonella and things like that. If you if you have a little bit too much. The FDA cited anal leakage, intense gastrointestinal pain, and diarrhea, and they still did not prove it for, uh, approve it for general use. It even has its own very special type of diarrhea called sterorrhea, in which fatty stool becomes the norm as the body rejects large swaths of fat. Like, you would go and you would just see chunks of fat floating in the toilet. This sounds like what I want my diet to be. <laughs> I mean, it's... A, I, wa- I want to get rid of that fat. Yeah. I guess it's the fat that I've been yeah. eating, but still. And there are actually products that kind of do this now. Like, if anybody's heard of the, the diet supplement Ally, it basically bonds with uh, fat and makes it pass through your system. And anybody who's used that product for a while knows you have to be very, very careful with it. And they even have a name for these kinds of potential accidents. They call them Ally Oops. Yes. <laughs> Another reason why the FDA didn't want to approve this is because... Whenever you have fat-soluble vitamins, like vitamin A, D, E, and K, they'll actually bond with Olestra and just pass through the system. So not only are you having diarrhea, you're also not getting any of the vitamins you ate from the good food you did have. And uh, Frito-Lay would end up countering this by adding like fat, uh, non-fat-soluble uh, vitamin supplements to the things that, or to the chips. So they tried to counter that. At th- so what you're saying is, I can eat an entire bag of chips... And not get fat. But the trade-off is, I'm going to be pooping for a yeah. while. I think I would take that risk, Tony. I, I think that that's, like, that's what a lot of people felt about this. And that's why a lot of people are kind of mad that this is a product that disappeared. It's like, sometimes you should be able to have the freedom to just poo your guts out. Just to be able to <laughs> lose a little bit of weight. But uh, in the end, the FDA did approve this uh, in 1996. One day before the patent was about to run out on the chemical. And that automatically extended it for a few years and allowed uh, Frito-Lay to bring out their now infamous Wow potato chip line. Almost every chip uh, type got this treatment. Doritos, Tostitos, Lay's. If it was part of the Frito-Lay brand, they made a chip with Olestra. Immediately, it was a huge success, pumping out almost 400 million sales in the first year. And the reason for this is the caloric difference that we've been talking about. It's pretty much half. One ounce of normal chips had 150 calories and 10 grams of fat. A Lester-based chips were 75 calories with zero grams of fat. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's like, it's rare that you can get something to literally just get cut in half. Like, diet sodas are zero calorie and everything, but they didn't have the exact same flavor as, like, a Coke. They're getting closer to that, but it's still not quite there. I do have to say, knowing that this product is going to become associated with with diarrhea and knowing that it was named wow <laughs> those two things together just don't really work that that's not something you want to have linked you don't want to be thinking wow diarrhea yeah. like that's just, especially whenever it's so explosive and like this is one of the things where it's <laughs> like people think oh it's just a stomach ache this is it's the type of stomach ache that will leave you like on the ground fetal position just holding your guts for a while or you know like stuck to the toilet holding your guts for a while i still want to argue and i realize that this is a real problem but i do want to say maybe associating eating chips with just insane pain in your butt area would be a good thing for public health. I mean, it, it very much could be. Like, that could be the thing that, like, the the negative association that gets people away from constant chip eating. <laughs> if every time you drank a soda, you just felt like throwing up for about three hours, you know, that might, that might, product might not have continued to be as popular as it yeah. was. Yeah, well, there's actually treatments that use that sort of thing for alcoholism. It's called anabuse. And they found out that people working in, like, rubber factories would sometimes get really sick after I... Uh, after drinking alcohol so they decided to make a pill for alcoholics that gives you an intense disassociation where you just throw like throw up for hours after having just a little bit of alcohol with it 
So like that, that's definitely something that's been tried. I'm sure it's also part of conversion therapy, which is definitely a bad idea too. But uh, we'll get to the let's let's move on with a uh, with a Lestra before we get into too many other products. Sorry for the side. <laughs> it's all track. good. I, uh, as you can imagine, whenever people started hearing about this, there was kind of a media storm. Everybody wanted to cash in either on the humor or on the public, like uh, the the public outcry. <laughs> Talking heads, comedians, and uh, sketch shows of all sorts jumped directly on it. Movies like The Sweetest Thing took advantage of it, showing their characters spit out the chips after reading on the front of the package that it could cause anal leakage. Mad TV had several skits about it, claiming that the product called Cholestra has 10% anal leakage. I know Robin Williams had jokes about it. Like, like just this entire time period was layered with Olean jokes. Oh. Can I read out one of these facts that you have in your document? Yeah, you definitely can. I've got it highlighted on your screen here. So I'm just going to read this. One of the only vocal advocates for Olestra was Rush Limbaugh, who said it because... Sorry. Who said that because of pencil neck geek people who are bigot busybodies, people aren't allowed to enjoy themselves. Uh, there's a 10-minute video on YouTube of Rush Limbaugh yelling about how much he likes Olestra and how it doesn't give him like stomach problems or anything, and basically just insulting all these people that are... Heads of the public center of health and things like that. Like, and like, it's just so condescending. It's actually, it's pretty worth a watch, but he like, he's vamping up this like crowd of old people talking about like him having perfect digestion. It's just a kind of surreal moment. This was from his TV show too. So you get to see him acting it all out. By the way, I do want to ask, and this might not make it into the episode. Uh, I did want to ask in relation to that. Were, was everyone affected, or were there people that didn't have problems with it so much? It seems like it was universally effective at causing these sorts of issues if you had too much. If you had a normal serving size, like a, a couple ounces of chips, like just a handful, most people would no be... Whenever eats a serving size Yeah, chips, that's, that's part of the that branding. That doesn't exist. That's literally part of the branding. Once you pop, you can't stop. Like, if you were to have a normal level of these chips... You would pro- you might have a little bit of stomach problems. It would probably be more like flatulence or something like that rather than a full-on like attack of diarrhea. And because of like this media storm, like you would see or you saw a huge drop off in people buying Olean type chips. Like uh, their their sales would drop in half. There would be a lot of people coming out directly opposing Olean and the Wow brand. And in 2002, Frito-Lay actually shut down the manufacturing plant. Like I said, it's not illegal in the United States anymore. It's actually used mostly as uh, like small machine lubrication and various other uh, like lube, uh, lubricants now. But there are you can still buy light Pringles that have it in them. It is banned in the European Union, Canada, and a whole slew of other countries, though. Okay. Well, freedom is still free in America. <laughs> And we can have our poop and chips if we want. Yeah. And like, the thing is, this isn't like this. is It's not the worst idea we've analyzed on this show. It's a bad idea to eat too many of the chips, but we still have that with products today. Like, I, I don't know if it's still, it's a bad idea to eat too many of any yeah, chips. Like, Let's just make that. Yeah. Clear. You're not going to make it healthy, like straight up. It's just not going to happen. But we still have products like this, like uh, erythritol, which I like because I'm on a low carb diet. I sometimes use a little bit of that to like have these like uh, chocolate popsicle things that have like 20 carb or uh, 20 calories and two carbs to them. It's like, yeah, if I have two of them, it's not going to affect me at all. If I have eight, it's definitely going to be a problem. People are probably know erythritol more for what it does with the uh, diet or the sugar free gummy bears that have notoriously wonderful uh, reviews on Amazon. Haribo. Yeah, getting that Haribo action up in there. But I like whenever I did have too much chocolate before, it is definitely a double over in pain type. Like, it's just bad. It definitely is bad. But that's also a consequence. It's like, would I rather be able to sate that sugary craving whenever I'm on a diet for months at a time and I don't get to go have like ice cream or something like that? Or I can have the, the, the ice cream with ethritol in it, like Halo Top ice cream. I very much enjoy and it doesn't cause like it doesn't cause these sorts of problems unless you have two pints of it. So it to me it seems like the bad idea is mostly just overeating these sorts of things and not not banning it. Like it seems like it's a little bit heavy handed to ban something like this. Although I do understand that 
the people that are having issues with this, they are losing a lot of nutrients because they aren't able to absorb vitamin A, D, K, things like that because it, it'll bond with those. So you have to be very careful with that sort of thing. But if people are responsible, which like you should have the right to choose if you're uh, if you're going to be responsible with this, then I think it could be a good diet substitute. But whenever you go to, like most snack aficionados and just eat an entire bag of chips in front of the TV, it's going to cause some problems. I think also tied into this is, uh, and I would say obviously, the public image problem. And we saw this in the Yugo episode as well, where the Yugo the car wasn't the worst thing ever of all time. But once people started associating it with cheapness and, you know, the, sorry, I'm going to say that again. Once people started it, asso- once people started associating it with cheapness and unreliability and lack of safety, they were taking a, a much bigger hit than the car itself was actually worth. And I think we're probably looking at a, a, a similar situation here where, yeah, the chips aren't the worst idea ever, but... If Frito-Lay can't sell enough of them to make it worth their while, then why keep it on the market? Yeah, definitely. And you don't want people associating normal Doritos with diarrhea because they had ones that tasted just like it before. Like, it's something where you really can't afford to have that. And even though they still use some products with it, it's such small dosages that it's, it's probably taking the calories down like 25%, which is still a good number. And I think that's all we have to say about Alestra this week. If you guys have ever had these chips, if you've had any I, any of the side effects, well, you, maybe you should keep that to yourself, but hit us up on Twitter and tell us what you thought of it and if you th- wish that this sort of product was still around. Tell us what you thought about our episode where we talked about chips that make you poop. Yep. <laughs> I mean, technically, uh, remember- all chips make you poop, but still. <laughs> Tony with the life wisdom here. <laughs> I always want to remind people that good ideas can look like bad ideas and bad ideas can look like good ideas. And sometimes the only way to tell the difference is to try. As always, if you have bad ideas you want to submit to us for us to talk about on the show, you can send those to badideashow at gmail.com. You can hit us up on at Human Echoes on Twitter, and we will see you guys next week with another episode. Have a good one. Episode. Have a good one. Episode. Have a good one.